Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a Cro-Magnon individual from Vladimirskaya Oblast in Russia, this is right here. Uh, what's very interesting about these Cro-Magnons is they, uh, they lived in the Upper Paleolithic, which is a period before uh, agriculture, it is a period before a lot of the technological advancement, it is a period before the domestication of horses, so they would get around, they were nomadic people and they would get around by foot, entirely on foot. Uh, in this time of in this time, this region was a lot colder than it is today, so they would have to live in like tundra or lesa tundra conditions rather than you know a moderate temperate forest that that are located here today. So they were they were basically like living in um, in the equivalent of the modern Arctic. They were living in a very cold condition. Uh, they would hunt mammoths, uh, and that's how they would survive. That's how they would live. These Cromanians eventually ended up fa fathering a lot of the West Eurasian populations. Uh, everybody in Europe, people in North Africa, people in the Middle East, people in South Asia as well. Uh, we all descend from these Cromanian people in some in some form or in, in some to some extent, right? We all descend to them uh, from them to some extent. Some of us d descend uh, maybe twenty percent from Cromanians. Some of us maybe two percent, but we all descend from Cromanians to some extent. Every West Eurasian, pretty much. Uh, descends from these people. Uh, let's go ahead and explore his uh, Y DNA. Let's and his traits. So we're going to start with trait predictor results. He's he's got C Y DNA. Uh, C Y DNA nowadays is very um, uncommon for Europeans, but it seems to be very predominant among Cromanians in Europe. Um, what did he look like? We're going to go ahead and look at his Nashakot results. What kind of appearance he had? It looks like he's got darkest brown eyes, so definitely very dark color eyes. It looks like he's got black hair, definitely very dark color hair. I mean, there is no like likelihood of any hair color other than black, pretty much. And for eye color, there is no likelihood of uh, eyes lighter than brown. There is 19% likelihood of brown eyes, but that's really low as well. Uh, for skin color, it looks like he's got light brown skin, uh, which is the same phenotype as what all the rest of Cromagnon's score. Uh, for hair texture, it looks like he's got curly or wavy hair. Very interesting. So he doesn't have kinky hair. He doesn't have straight hair. He most likely has curly or wavy hair. And what's really interesting about him in terms of the blue eye haplotypes is that he has heterozygous genotype in blue eye haplotype 4, uh, which is very, you know, very interesting. And it also contributes to, it also proves my point that I've made a couple months later when I made a uh, phylogenetic tree of blue eyes video that blue eye haplotype 4 happened, the derived variant there happened earlier than blue eye haplotype 2 because uh, I, I don't think you will ever find a uh, upper paleolithic genome who has blue eye haplotype 2. I don't think that's... Maybe, actually, maybe I will. Maybe somewhere in the future there will be an uh, upper paleolithic individual with blue eye haplotype 2. Uh, maybe they will find something like that. But so far, from the data we have today, it looks like blue eye haplotype 4 is indeed more ancient than blue eye haplotype 2. Um, it looks like he does not have the European, or actually I should say Eurasian light skin variations in SLC 2485. So 2485, yeah. So it looks like he does not have, if you take only this gene into account, he does not have light skin. If you upload this file to YSEC, they would draw him uh, looking very black. Uh, however, he does have some other variations that contribute to... Um, to lighter pigmentation of skin, like his genotypes in Asib, uh, his genotypes here near SLC 45A2, his genotypes, uh, let's see where else. Actually, no, he doesn't have any light, light, light skin variants in Keto G either. That's interesting. Yeah, so he's probably even a little bit darker than the other Cromanians from, from Sungir that I made videos on. Very interesting, okay. Um, what is very surprising here is he has two, two light color variants in all of the SLC 24A4 for mutations which is very interesting. So he's probably um, slightly more predisposed to having uh, green eyes rather than blue eyes with an amber center. Although you can't really see it here because he's scoring 0 0.000 for both. He's scoring 0, 0.00 for both. But uh, if you look at the numbers, he's probably got a little bit of a higher odds for green eyes than blue eyes with an amber center. Um, let's see what else. Is there anything else here? That's interesting. He does not have any light color, color variants in MC1R, so no ginger variants. Okay, uh, that's kind of all I can talk about here. All right, let's go ahead and explore his ethnic calculator results. What kind of ethnicities he resembled most? And if you click on that, you will see that he resembles most people outside of Europe, such as uh, Sarazm in Neolithic people from Tajikistan, 
um, Bactrians, which are also in South Central Asia, Afghans, medieval Afghans, which are also in the same region, um, medieval people from Kafkaz, which are also kind of, you know, West Asian, Kimerians from Ukraine, then further it's Batai hunter-gatherers from Kazakhstan, uh, Volga Burtas, Burtas are Iranic people, so once again, a little bit of a, and this sample is quite Iranic shifted, so once again, it's Iranic people. Uh, Sarmatians from Urals, Balshoy Leni Ostrov, and Livan Lukta comes last. So it looks like this individual definitely has a lot of uh, sort of Eastern Oriental, not Oriental as in Middle East, but more like South Asian and Caucasus admixture, Caucasus affinities. And you will see this with GED match as well. So this is what he scores with Eurogene's K15. Uh, you can see he's scoring 17% South Asian. And um, he's scoring a lot of really exotic stuff that modern Europeans wouldn't score. He's scoring 4% Northeast African, 3% Sub-Saharan. Uh, he's scoring 5% uh, Oceania. And he's scoring a lot of components that modern people in Europe or anywhere in the world actually don't score. Uh, that's because he has some affinities to South Asians and at the same time affinities to Western Europeans. It's very interesting. Uh, so you will see with the Oracle what I'm talking about. He's getting modeled as a mixture of Spanish plus Malta 1. Uh, and Malta 1 actually does have a lot of South Asian affinities as well. So it looks like he's getting modeled as a mixture of some kind of Western European or Southwestern European plus uh, South Asian, which is very interesting. There is Hungarian plus Austroasiatic. Uh, there is Spanish once again plus Malta 1. Portuguese plus Malta 1. Uh, Moldavian plus Austroasiatic. Austroasiatic people are uh, people off the coast of South India. Actually, let's uh, let's look it up where it is because I'm not not entirely sure. Um, I think I should just do this. Oh, I hate this. I hate this so much. Okay, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, so we we get the picture of where it is. It's probably around Australia, right? It's got Austria in the name. So um, you can see this individual is pretty much not a European, not 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 uh, similar to modern Europeans at all. And he's not similar to his his uh, predecessors. Like, not predecessors. Is that the right word? Descendants. He's not similar to his descendants, descendants the Western hunter-gatherers. So the Western hunter-gatherers are actually super different from Cromanions in terms of the uh, ethnic... ethnic uh, affinities. Now let's go ahead and explore his polygenic risk scores, what kind of traits he has. It looks like he's got a uh, significantly above average score for schizophrenia. It looks like he's got a very high score for type 2 diabetes. It looks like he's got a below average score for Alzheimer's. Uh, and it looks like he's got a below average score for multiple sclerosis. He has two risk variants for breast cancer at 24, which is pretty uh, pretty typical. He's got 18 risk variants for testicular cancer at 24, which is really, really bad. So we have to keep this in mind. Uh, the score for testicular cancer here is a little bit bad. We have to keep this uh, in the back of our mind a little bit. It's really me, I have I have to keep it in the back of my mind as I go through the video. Uh, one risk variant for celiac disease out of 12, which is pretty typical. One for GSS out of 18, which is really atypical. Uh, I'm going to assume that this is due to genotyping errors. And two risk variants for Crohn's disease out of 28, which is pretty typical. Zero for Reifenstein's out of 24, which is really good. Four for Parkinson's out of 44, which is not good. So um, it is possible that he has these four risk variants, in, like genuinely has them. And it's not genotyping errors because you wouldn't have four random genotyping errors uh, in the same region. <laughs> I mean, it, doesn't, it sounds wrong, but you wouldn't have four random genotyping errors. They're actually not all that common. So... We have to keep in mind that he probably has a high score for a uh, high risk for Parkinson's, a high risk for testicular cancer, and a high risk for type 2 diabetes. That's pretty much all I have to keep in mind here. Uh, so it looks like he's got um, heterozygous genotype in comt valmet variation, and he's got Warrior genotype in MAOA, so he's probably more Warrior than Warrior overall. Uh, slower breakdown of, of dopamine, therefore higher dopamine levels and certain advantages in attention and, and motivation tasks. Disadvantages in stress resiliency, typical stuff. Also, very stereotypically European genotype to have, by the way. Uh, he's got no derived, no golden variants, there are two provenance and proveration, which means higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and higher likelihood of schizophrenia. He also has the A allele in TAC1, which is really, really interesting. And it's implicated in a decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and slightly increased likelihood of alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD. Overall, I would say this genotype is a little bit worse, it's a little bit more bad than it is good because. Let's talk about the good, right? The good is that it, it decreases the likelihood of schizophrenia. So that's good. 
But the bad is that it increases the likelihood of alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD, and a, a range of other issues. These bad issues are a lot more, a lot, a lot more common than schizophrenia. So if you have, um, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're reducing the risk of schizophrenia by a little bit, it is something that doesn't affect that many people. But in return, you increase the odds for these really, really common illnesses such as ADHD, Parkinson's, alcoholism. Like, I mean, who doesn't have an alcoholic? Uh, a person with ADHD or a person with Parkinson's in their family. Who doesn't have that? I think every family has an alcoholic, a person with, with Parkinson's or a person with ADHD. It's just super common. So overall, I would say this genotype is more bad um, than it is good. Right. And this individual also does not have long-form 5-HTTLPR. He's got a short-form 5-HTTLPR, and therefore he does not have a decrease in the risk of depression. Most people have the same genotype. Most people have short-form 5-HTTLPR. We're going to skip autism. We're going to skip DDC. Uh, for lactose persistence, this is very interesting. So he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation in MCM6. It's this variation, in this variation of MCM6, but he does have one derived variant for European lactose persistence in this variation of MCM6, which is really interesting. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm the first person to talk about this, because I did some research prior to recording this video, and I really am the first person to mention that this Sungir 2 individual has uh, heterozygous genotype here. Like, nobody before me has mentioned this at all, which is very interesting. Um, I'm not sure what to make of this. Why? I'm, I'm really not sure what to make of this, to be honest. Uh, but he does not have any derived variants in, in the main variation of MCM6. So I guess, uh, I guess the researchers who were doing research with these Sungir genomes Maybe they didn't um, bother to check the second the secondary variation. Maybe they didn't bother to check that, or maybe they just assumed that they don't need to because it's an upper Paleolithic genome and it definitely doesn't have it or whatever. But it looks like this is actually the earliest um, the earliest sample of found with heterozygous genotype for European lactose persistence. Very interesting stuff here. Uh, for OXTR, it looks like this individual has two variants for higher levels of empathy in OXTR. Uh, for diabetes, it looks like this individual, let's see, um, does not have type 1 diabetes. Really good to see. But type 2 diabetes score, we already know what that is. For hemochromatosis, it looks like he does not have any H63D variants, uh, nor does he have any C282Y variants, nor does he have any S65C variants. So he really doesn't have any risk variants for hemochromatosis. Really good to see. I have found... Uh, other two genomes from Sungir, other two Cromanians from Sungir, who did have uh, the uh, derived variants in his, in his 63 ASP. So I've seen um, other Crom other Cromanians from Sungir who had homo who had heterozygous genotype for hemochromatosis here in age 63D. For Alzheimer's, it looks like he does not have any risk variants in APOE. Uh, really good to see everything else. We don't really care. We already saw the polygenic risk score which takes all of that into account. So for multiple sclerosis, it looks like he's got uh, no HLA uh, risk variance there. And this is the most important uh, gene for risk for multiple sclerosis. So that's really good to see. For cardiovascular, we're going to skip that. I don't care. For myopia, nothing interesting here. We're going to skip that. For miscellaneous section, no micropenis. All right. Doesn't have uh, genotypes for micropenis in this variation. And he also does not have micropenis if you look at genotypes for this variation. So he doesn't have micropenis. Uh, that's very interesting. All right. Uh, better performing muscles likely sprinter rather than an endurance athlete. And he uh, likely does not have folic sneeze, ref sneeze reflex. He's got one fat gene variant and FTOs, RS99, 39, 609, higher roads of obesity and sleep apnea. Uh, he doesn't have shovel shaped ancestors and he's not East Asian in ancestry. Actually, if you look at his genotype in EZAR, which is very interesting. If you look at this genotype, he has he doesn't have East Asian EZAR. But if you look at this genotype, he does have East Asian EZAR. This is a very stereotypically East Asian genotype in EZAR. So he actually has, um, he probably has some East Asian facial traits, which is very interesting. I think a lot of people, when they do research, they would just, they would look at only this variation and they would see, well, doesn't have East Asian EZAR. But they wouldn't, they, they would disregard the other genotypes. They would disregard the other variations in this gene that also contribute to uh, facial traits and phenotypes, and they, and they are also playing a part in the ethnic calculation, right? Such as this one. Like, it's pretty important. There's a very big difference in the allele frequencies here bet between the East Asians and the Europeans, as big as in this variation. But for some reason, 
uh, I think this variation gets overlooked and people don't really care about it. So I'm going to go ahead and say that based on his genotype here, he actually does have East Asian, East Asian EDR and he does have some East Asian facial traits and he's most likely not European ethnic background. That's why it's so important to look at more than one variation in the gene to determine what kind of, you know, complexities there are, I think. He's got eugenist variation, which, is, which means he's not an Asian flusher. He's got lower odds of alcoholism and normal risk of esophageal cancer. Uh, so if he drinks alcohol, he's not going to flush up like East Asians do. And he's got this genotype, which leads to larger brain volume. And it's actually a rare genotype. Very interesting. We're going to skip drug response. Oh, no, we, we're not going to skip that. He's got TT here, which means he got lower odds of cannabis-induced psychosis. Very interesting to see. Once again, this is uh, one of those variations that I kind of look for. Uh, it's interesting to me because uh, because Europeans have the TLE at the highest frequency. The highest frequency of the TLE was found in Europeans, Spanish people specifically, and it's it's kind of a mystery to me why Europeans are uh, so protected from cannabis-induced psychosis. For albinism in a typical trace panel, it looks like he does not carry any risk variants for albinism. He is not albino, and he's also not a carrier for Melanesian blonde hair variants. For familiar Mediterranean fever, he does not have any risk finance for that. Uh, we're going to skip MTHFR. For cancers, I wanted to talk about the testicular cancer portion, right? So let's talk about the testicular cancer portion. He's got this genotype. All of these genotypes lead to higher risk of testicular cancer. Wow, that's interesting. So uh, he definitely has much higher risk for testicular cancer than the average person. All right. And for leukemia, it looks like he's got some genotypes that contribute to an increase in the risk of leukemia, but some others that contribute to a decrease in the risk of leukemia. For rare diseases panel, it looks like he does not have one Gerg's disease, which is very interesting. Another carrier for variants of for Bloom syndrome, he has this genotype, which, is to, which leads to slightly increased risk of several autoimmune diseases, including Addison's disease. It also increases the odds for uh, type 1 diabetes. He does not have GSS and He's got this gene type, which also leads to slightly higher risk for certain autoimmune diseases, which is very interesting. I think they both contribute to the score for... No, 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 they don't. No, they don't. Because I don't have a score for type 1 diabetes. So no, they don't. They actually don't contribute to the score for type 1 diabetes because I don't have one. Maybe I should add it. I don't know. Uh, two risk variants here, which leads to 4.6 times higher odds of... I don't even know what that is. I think it's an inflammation of the esophagus, from what I remember. But yeah. It's an inflammatory disease. For celiac disease, it looks like he does not have any risk variants here. So that's pretty that's pretty cool. We're going to skip allergies. Androgen receptor gene, he's got typical higher odds of boldness. So he does not have the allele that protects from going bold. Uh, he's got slightly higher odds, you know, typical odds for Europeans, but slightly higher odds compared to like East Asians and Sub-Saharan Africans for going bold. <laughs> for Crohn disease, it looks like he does not have risk variants for that. None of the important variations. Um, in 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 the important variations, he does not have any risk variance, which is what what's most important, right? For Canavan syndrome, zero risk variance in all of the uh, variations that were found in the file. That's good to see. Uh, for HIV and AIDS panel, it looks like he has one protective variant in C nine twenty seven T. So he's got a allele that protects from HIV, and he also has one protective variant here, which leads to sixty percent uh, reduction in HIV viral load viral load, which is very good to see once again. Uh, what that really means is that, you know, in HIV, some people, people, the progression from HIV into AIDS is different for people, right? For some people, the progression is really quick and it just, HIV just turns into AIDS and then they die. For some people, it's really slow and it could take decades. So it really is about HIV viral load and how, how your body is able to fight against it, uh, for how long this fight can be prolonged. Uh, in this case, it's good for him because he, uh, his body is quite resistant to HIV. And it seems that Europeans, in general, if you look at the allele frequencies for the good alleles that protect from HIV, uh, Europeans are the ones who have all the good alleles. So there is even a theory, if you can look it up on Google or something, there's a theory that Europeans uh, developed this protection from HIV um, during the times of the Black, Black Plague. I'm not sure how true that is. It's just a theory, but it is a fact that Europeans are somewhat protected from HIV. Oh, not me, though. I don't have any protective, protective variants here uh, or anybody in my family. For muscular dystrophy, it looks like he does not have any risk variants for that, but he does have 
one risk variant for ADL out of 40, which is really weird. Uh, in this case, it is probably due to genotyping errors once again, uh, because it would be very, very weird if he in reality had one risk variant for that. And for color blindness, this is something I added very recently, um, like yesterday. He does not have any risk variants for color blindness. All right, he's not color blind. But um, I don't really know. What, what about this? What do you think about this? Um, hold on. Lactose persistence thing. Because I, I don't know. Could it be a genotyping error? Could it be just a faulty chip that they used to genotype this sample? Or like, what's the, what's the thing here? Because if it is, um, if he really is heterozygous for this variation, that's pretty big. I think this should be known in this case. People should know about it. Uh, well, thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And you can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. Goodbye.